Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial and in this one we're going to talk about how to make a simple bowling game in Unreal Engine and I have made a few already so let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that okay so I'm going to go start with games uh, for the project categories and next and here I'm just, just going to go for blank and next uh, the project setting here can be either blueprint or C++ doesn't matter we can probably try both Okay, and then we can call this guy my cool bowling game. Bowling game already. And then we're gonna create projects. Okay. Alright. So if you are a beginner and who wanted to just start making games, this is actually a, a decent beginner tutorial. It doesn't really go to and it's in too deep, but it's good enough for you to have a taste of this uh, game engine. Let me turn that out. It's not, this one is not on your UI. Okay, so what you do is holding down right mouse button and move around to look around the scene, right mouse and uh, drag, right? While you're doing that, you can use WSAD to look around the engine, right, the viewport. Okay. Just like you're like you're playing a FPS game, or you can hold in down Alt and left mouse button to rotate or tumble, middle mouse button to pan, and right mouse button to zoom in and out. Same thing. The panning is reversed compared to Maya, so if you don't like that, you go to Edit and Editor Preferences. I believe you tap in Invert in the setting, and then there is a Invert middle mouse pan. Check on that and then it's gonna feel exactly like Maya, more or less, right? All right, um, now the UI is gonna be really similar to common game engines like Unity, you have Outliner here, which is everything you have in the scene, Details, which is the equivalent of Inspector, which shows you the settings for the tools you're, for the elements you're selecting now. There is also a world settings which uh, will control rendering, will control the game mode, which is how the game is played, the rules, and a bunch of other things. On the other side is going to be the some of the already available assets or new assets you created. And this content browser also have all the assets you created and or imported. Okay, all right, and you have the UI. You have a few buttons for you to you know do some quick settings and testing. All right, that's basically how the UI feels like. We're gonna start with uh, a new scene here because I don't really like all those things here in the scene already. So I'm gonna go ahead and go for file, new level, and here empty or default scene would be good. Okay, and then I'm not really wanting that ground, so I'm gonna go delete that. Okay, so we're gonna start with creating the player, right? So this is the bowling game, and the rule is we have a player that has an arrow. You can probably use that arrow, something like that here. Right. The arrow will show you the direction of the ball and then you hit left left mouse button to shoot the ball out, basically. So I'm gonna go here to the content browser, right click, we're gonna call go create a blueprint class. Now Unreal Engine offers a highly integrated programming uh, language called Blueprint. It's visual scripting. It's not the best programming solution uh, for sure, but it's pretty fast. It's probably one of the most fast programming way you can do like uh, you, because you don't have to even write a line of code uh, when you're creating smaller projects it's really convenient and it has almost everything you need to create a game theoretically you can make any game with it but is it good for like uh, bigger games that's that's up for discussion but nonetheless it's used for bigger games like Fortnite just partially used it's really convenient especially for the level designers for the ones who is actually working in the editor and trying to fine tune things with the tools built on the low level by the C++ programmers, Blueprint is perfect for upper level designers to do their job. So it's kind of like a really, uh, kind of like a necessity for a bigger team because you don't want the programmer to take care of every little thing, right? There will be the designers on top level to do their job, okay? So this is, I think this is what Blueprints are for. Uh, blueprint code are for. So I'm gonna go ahead and go create a pong here. Okay, and I'm gonna call this guy BP underscore uh, player. Okay, now pong is something that can be possessed by the player controller. Player controller is the basically the representation of you, 
right? You are the player controller, and you can possess different pawns in the game, which will be the the thing, the actual thing that represent represents you, right? You and the things that are represent you are two different things, right? The player can possess anything. When that thing dies, right? When your character dies, the player is not dead. It's just the player can go into a spectator. Kind of like states, so that's why those two things are not the same concept in the default settings in Unreal. You can already see how there is an architecture already built in Unreal, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and double click to open that BP player. Okay, you can see now this opens up the bl blueprint editor, which gives you the uh, whole system to create components and add coding to the, the to the player. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Add Components. Okay, that's gonna allow me to add any component I want. I'm look for arrow component. This, this gives me an arrow, right? And I'm gonna use that arrow to show me the direction you can rotate that, right? Okay, but of course I don't want it to be, uh, uh, you know, rotated in here. I want it to be controlled by the player if I can, right? And also I want to be see it. So I think we can see it right away. So let's drag it in here and let's play the game. You can see, are we seeing that? Mm, probably not. Let's <laughs> turn that off. Let's take a look at that visibility thing. Okay, game. It shouldn't be changing game. Uh, I'm gonna grab the arrow. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's in here. So you can see the arrow is hidden in game. I don't want that. Check that out and compile and save this. How you save your thing? Uh, theoretically, you don't have to even press those buttons. Pressing the play button will save everything you did here, anyways. So let me move that away and let's play again. Holding down right mouse button, look down. You can see now there is a an arrow here. Hit escape to to uh, go out of the play mode. Okay, all right. So the navigation here in this viewport is going to be the same as the other one here, right? And it, every time you made a change, uh, you can press save or compile and, compile and save to save the change you did. So I'm gonna try to use coding to control the direction of the arrow. This is gonna be on the, or in the event graph, okay? So what happens is when I rotate the mouse well, right, I wanted to rotate the arrow. So I'm gonna go right click here and search for uh, uh, mouse well, uh, axis, this one. You can just search for something you wanna, you wanna look for. But you don't have to tap in the whole thing. Open time, you can find it. It's gonna filter everything in real time, right? So I'm gonna choose the mouse well axis. Oh, sorry, not that one. There's another one which is event driven mouse well axis. This one, event. Okay, this will give you a event here. And even is something that's gonna be triggered when something happens. In this case, in this case, when the mouse well is rotated. This event will be uh, will be uh, called or will be executed, right? And you know this guy here, x value, which is an argument it gives you. Uh, this value tells you the how much the mouse wheel has moved. Okay. Now this is something we call execution pin, which will be the calling execution flow, right? Whatever connected to this will be the next step or next uh, command to do. And here, what I want to do is change the rotation of the arrow. So I'm going to drag the arrow in to the uh, graph to create a, a, a reference of the arrow. So this is basically the, the representation of arrow in the coding. I'm going to drag out from that blue dot, and then this search bar will, the search menu will pop up. I'm going to say add local rotation. Okay. As you can see, I didn't type in the whole thing, right? Add local rotation should be fun. And connect that execution pin to there. Okay, now how much I'm rotating is gonna be based on the axis value, of course. And I want to rotate it, uh, let's see, on the Z axis, right? Go left and right. So I'm gonna go back here to the even graph. You can see that's the Z. So I can right click here and say uh, split. That's gonna split it into three pins. Then I can use X value to control that. Okay, let's compile and save that. Okay, and just like that, we're able to use our mouse wheel to control the rotation of the arrow. Uh, but when we play the game, you can see we're still looking around like a FPS player <laughs> and our mouse wheel doesn't do anything. Okay, That's because even we're playing the game, we're possessing the default pawn, not this guy we dragged in. Okay, So back here with this guy selected, okay, I'm going to go to the uh, search details in the details panel, which is the setting for this guy. I'm going to look for auto and you can see auto possess player 
is disabled, let's change that to zero. This is the easiest way to make the game or make the player zero, which is you, right? If we're doing a single player game. Uh, this, is, this is the easiest way for you to make the player actually possess this thing. Okay, now play the game. We don't really see it, so let me stop that. We need to see it through a camera. So I'm gonna go here to the viewport, which is you know the construction area where we where we can place and you know manipulate our components. I'm gonna add a camera component. Okay, search for camera and look for that. This camera will be the camera that the player will be looking through. Now for any camera. There is the auto active setting. If this is checked down, then this camera will be the camera that's being used for the view for for the viewing. Uh, so that's why it's it's being used automatically. I'm gonna drag this thing back and then look look down. Now if it's hard to see, you can go to the viewport and you can grab that. You can see how this uh, camera is looking at through this small preview window, right? And then you can then manipulate it in the editor here. You can see us how it's updating in real time in there. I'm gonna compile and save that. Now let's play the game. You can see now we can use the mouse wheel to rotate, right, and to control like how much the arrow is pointing at, which is really convenient. I'm gonna stop that. Okay, alrighty. And then we're gonna go create the bowling ball. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go add a new component and create a sphere, basically, right. Uh, and that sphere is now parented on this camera because you. Uh, you are selecting camera, so let me control Z to go back. I'm gonna grab the default scene root and then add a sphere. That way, it's gonna position it in the right place. I kind of want it to be smaller, so I'm gonna change the scale to 0.2. Uh, maybe too small. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's gonna be the size, right? Scale on the X, Y, Z three directions. Okay, because this is three dimensional, so you can scale it on three different directions which by the way the way you move things around is hit W to move things right and uh, uh, E to rotate and R to scale after you select them by left left clicking right you can drag those squares or you can drag the middle one uh, the smaller squares or on the, the different color squares are different axes the one in the middle is the uniform scale same goes for others like here if you move you can drag the dots in the middle to move it freely, or you can drag different axes to drag them or move it on those various individual directions. Okay, scale is a bunch of circles, which does similar things. All right, let's save that, compile it. Now we have a ball here, right? Play the game, you can see we have the ball over there already. All right, next thing I want to do is when I hit left click, right? I want the ball to be shoot out. So back here to the even graph, I want to implement that real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna right click here and say mouse button, left mouse button actually, left mouse button. When it's pressed, okay, I want the sphere to be shoot out. And by the way, you can grab anything and hit F2 to rename it. I'm gonna call this guy bowling ball. Okay, compile and save that and drag it over here. Okay, and the uh, same thing here, I'm gonna first of all, set simulate physics. Okay, this is gonna make it similar physics. We wanna check that on and uh, drag out the pressed. What this means is when left mouse button is pressed, bowling ball will be simulating physics. Okay, and then we want to apply a force on the ball, right? So we can drag out from there and then apply, uh, add impulse actually, that's the command, impulse. Okay, and then you can see drag out from there, it's automatically gonna make that the, the, the target. So add impulse will be adding uh, force or impulse to bowling ball and then we can connect that over here which means after enabling physics we then apply the impulse to the bowling ball. You can hold in our right mouse button to move around and then the middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Okay. Alrighty, so the, the, the impulse amount will be how much we're pushing it. That's going to be based on the direction of the arrow, right? So I'm going to drag the arrow out and then I'm going to say get forward actor where it's pointing at Okay, and that goes to the impulse. This is basically the direction. Okay, and the velocity change can be checked down, which means that we are actually changing the velocity to the value we give it. Now, there's a little problem here, though. The forward vector is a very small vector. A vector is basically a three-dimensional um, array of integers or numbers, 
uh, which represent x, y, and z three directions. Uh, translate that into a, an arrow in the three D space, and it's only one unit one unit long. So it's really slow in this case. Uh, we're gonna make that bigger by dragging out from here and typing in a star, which is multiply. We're gonna multiply the vector with a float here, and the result goes to there. And this is gonna be the speed, right? I'm gonna drag out from here and say promote to variable, and I'm gonna name this guy throw speed okay and then compile and save that we can then start typing in a default value for that throw speed we can go for like a uh, hundred or so i'm not quite sure but let's try so i'm going to compile that now back here in the game we can hit play and left click and see how the ball goes forward now of course 100 is too small so i'm going to change that to a thousand ten times bigger give that one more try you can see now we're shooting the ball out Okay, now it's that simple, right? We just get a working control. You can see how different directions from the arrow will get the ball to that direction, right? which is nice. Now we don't have a, uh, a track yet, so I'm gonna drag in a cube and then just scale it and you know, uh, using those uh, gizmos. So W is how you move, right? And then R is how you scale it in different directions, right? And then E is how you rotate, which I don't need to. And I drag it over here. All right. Now another neat trick here is you can drag your uh, player here and drag it up and hit the end button, which will make it sit there, <laughs> which is not going to be working actually here because it's not going to put it in the center. So I probably need to just drag it up. You can see your snapping here and there, which is not cool. I'm going to turn off the snapping by clicking on that. That way I can move it freely. Okay. Just need to eyeball it to almost there and then turn that back down. I'm going to grab that and holding down Alt and drag to have a copy of that. Drag it over here and make it higher. Alt and drag again to move it over there. Okay. And now I'm going to try to create a bunch of pins in here. Okay. And that's going to be another uh, type of blueprint we can do. So uh, when there's a start in, star in here, you know it's not saved. So you click on it and press Control S to save it. We're going to right click and create another blueprint class and this time we're going to choose actor because it's just something we need to to be placed or spawn in the world so i'm going to go choose that and this is going to be my bp as blueprint underscore pin okay hit enter to open that and here i'm going to add a component which is this time maybe we can choose a cone here right a cone as the re visual representation I'm gonna drag the cone up so it's sitting on the ground. Okay, it should be snapped right there. Okay, compile and save that. And we'll just make it similar to physics by checking on that. And that should be everything we do. So I'm gonna compile and save that. And just like that, we have a cone. Okay, uh, of course, I think it is um, too wide. So I'm gonna delete that and go back here. Uh, we can tweak it in the viewport and make it thinner on the X and Y direction as, you know, that's the horizontal direction skills, so I'm going to change that those two values to 0.5 and then we can drag this guy over to create one pin and I'll drag to create a bunch of copies alrighty now let's play the game and then we can find a direction and shoot it out you can see now we can hit those things right? Now I look at it, I think maybe I can go faster here. So I'm going to go to the throw speed. This is also available here in the variables uh, section. And we can change that to 5,000, which is five times faster. right? And then I'm going to close that, play the game again. You can see how fast we can develop our game, right? Just with a bunch of nodes. We don't even do a whole lot of stuff. OK. All righty, cool. Uh, I think that's a little bit too fast. <laughs> I'm going to change the throw speed. You can also just select it in the even, even graph. We can change that to 25,100. Uh, Maybe that would do better. Right. Alrighty. And I think I can make those things even thinner. So I can double click to open that. Even they're all placed in the scene, I can change it here. And that should, in theory, update all those things as you can see in here, right? That's the power of doing this in the blueprint way because I can make adjustment uh, in the blueprint 
editor and then I can see them updates in the viewport. Uh, so point three maybe. I just need to find it. That, no, that should be one. Yeah, the proper value for those pins. Uh, I think I, I think I need more pins in this case. So I'm gonna drag them closer here because I don't have ten pins. I cannot really make a strike with that. You can also drag these two. Uh, this little uh, corner in here to move it uh, in a flat plane that's across both x and y directions. Let me grab these three, alt and drag to have another copy. And this goes in here, and this goes in there, and this goes in there, and one more copy. Yeah, now, now I have a 10 pin structure. Play that again, right? Pretty cool. Now moving on from there, I just need to create a counter here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna save this and save this. Okay, and then I'm gonna right click here and then uh, create a new blueprint class. Okay, and this is also gonna be an actor here. Call this guy BP counter. Okay, for the BP counter, I'm gonna need a few things. First of all, I need a, an environment or a hole there to capture that. Uh, so it's easier to maybe drag one in there so I can see what's going on. And then add a few things, like a few cubes, I think will be uh, enough. So I'm gonna double click on, or uh, press F2 and name it wall. Okay, right, I'm gonna make it flat. Go down, this is actually a floor here, as you can see. I'm dragging, drag the same down somewhere here. All right. Okay. And then I can just start manipulating this thing. You can see how it's updating in the viewport. Okay. And then grab that and I can press Ctrl D or Ctrl W actually to duplicate. Okay. You can see I have another copy here. Okay, I'm gonna go grab that and then hit W and move it out here. And then rotate it. Uh, 90 degrees. The snapping is actually doing a pretty good job for me. I can easily get to something I want. Alt, uh, Control W one more time, right? And sometimes it doesn't give you a proper representation until you change it somehow, <laughs> or move it and then Control Z, I guess. <laughs> Load it in 90 degrees and put it in here. Control W one more time, right? And then drag it out, and then Control Z. Grab that and drag it out again. I I'm not sure why it's not updating properly in the viewport. Okay. And then just need uh just need one more thing, maybe a cap there, I think will be enough. So I'm gonna grab that and control W one more time. Drag it up, control Z, grab that again and drag it up. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, maybe you can drag it back in here. Uh, it's I I do recommend you to recommend you to uh, to tweak it in the blueprint editor instead of in the viewport because or you can do that here, and you can make it make the change back to the blueprint, right? Uh, yeah, so you can do it yeah, both ways. I'm gonna compile and save that. Now, after that, I need to make sure that I, whoever that's basically fall into the ground in here, right? In real life, you know that that's what's that's how a pin is counted. So we need to have a collider here. I'm gonna add a box collision. Okay, and that's gonna be oops. Grab the default scene root and do that. Okay, and then compile and save that. You can see now we have a box in there, right? I'm gonna grab the box and then just scale it. Okay, or you can do it in here, right? It's actually in the. If I make this bigger, you can see it's in here, right? It's a bunch of components and drag it up. Uh, maybe make it fall down there. It doesn't have to be all accurate. I just have to be in here, maybe a little bit lower here, right? Just in case that some of the pins may hit it, but not really falling down. So I guess I can drag this thing down a little bit more. So to to make sure that whoever overlaps it does not actually has to actually fall into the the bottom here, <laughs> right? Okay. So now drag, uh, going, uh, I can then grab this right say apply instance change to blueprint 
that way it's going to be updated in here as well okay i'm going to go to the event graph and start implementing the details oh you know what? there's one more thing i need to have a video to show me how many pins i have uh, knocked down right so i need i need to add another component which is text render okay again i don't want it to be under box so i'm going to grab the default scene root and do that text render and call this guy score keeper okay compile and save that for the score keeper i'm going to change the text to score column zero right we start with zero compile and save that okay now in the event graph we're going to try to uh, do something with the overlapping event so with the box selected we're going to scroll down to the bottom there is a uncomponent begin overlap press that plus button. This event will be triggered whenever something is overlapping with it. And then we need to know if the other actor is a pin. So we're going to say um, is child actor, oh, sorry, not there, um, get class. OK. And then we're going to check that equals to another class, uh, which is the pin class, bp underscore pin. So this is basically checking if the other actor is of the type pin, right? If it is a BP pin that we dragged into the scene. Checking against that, holding down B and click to have a branch, we connect that condition, which is the result to be the condition here, and the execution goes to there, right? So this is a condition that's either true or false based on if those two are equal or not. If those two are equal, that means uh, it is actually a pin that is overlapping with the box, then we need to add scores, right? So we need to have a value or variable or some storage, right, to store the actual score. So we want to go to the variables here and click on add variable. We want to call this guy uh, score, right? The type will be an integer, which is a number that's not having any fractions. Okay, we can compile that and default value is zero, which is cool. Okay, and drag out from the score, get it. And then we're going to say uh, set. Oh, actually, I don't have to. Yeah, I need to drag it out. And then we can say plus one. Uh, oh, increment should be fine. Yeah, increment, because uh, if you look at what's going on here, it's adding one to the specified value, which is score, and then set it. So score will be set to one plus score, basically. So this is incrementing score by one. Okay, when that is done, then we need to set the score of the uh, the scorekeeper. So we're going to drag out from there, and then we can say set text, right? To set its text, drag out to there. The text is re uh, asking for a text value, right? So we can drag here and then say uh, string to text. That's going to give us a string. Okay, and then we can create an append node. You just drag out from those dots and start tapping in the node you want to create. Everything here is a node. Okay, I can drag that over here. Okay, and then for the first one, we're gonna say score, and then oops, I need a column there as well, right? And then space, and then this result here will go to B. It's gonna do a automatic com conversion to convert the number here to a string, which is a sequence of letters, right? So what's happening here is that every time when something something overlaps with the box, we check if it, it is uh, a pin, right? If it is true, then we add one to score and then just set the text of the scorekeeper, right? Which is what's written, what's written in here, right? To uh, score and then column and then the score we got, we calculate it, right? append those two things together and convert that, that into a text and then we set it okay so that's what's happening um, okay now one more thing i want to do is to destroy that pin okay so i can i think we can do it over here we can hold down shift and also drag to select multiple ones right drag it out okay and we can say other actor destroy actor we do that also. We can insert this between the true and then the next steps. And we got this entire logic, right? Compile and save that. OK. Uh, now back here to the viewport, we can just basically go grab the scorekeeper, 
uh, we can position it. I think it should be rotated 180 degrees and drag it over here. Maybe make it bigger so we can see it better. Oops. Okay. All right, let's play the game. We can see score is zero. Hit something down, you can see they're incrementing. Right, we got three now. Okay. Now one thing that's interesting is that if we play it and we hit it over here, right? Oh, it's hard to, to show you, but if we hit something, we hit again, you can see it's keep pushing forward, keep pushing the ball forward. <laughs> so there's something we can fix here, which is should be very easy in Blueprint, which we can just double click here on the BP player and say, we, we're gonna just do it once. So drag it out from here, we can say do once. Oops, do once. Right, you can see it's automatically inserting that in the middle, which is cool. So this will allow me to only do it once. Okay. Now one last thing we can do is we can restart the game by reloading the whole level using right mouse button. So we can say right mouse button. Right, and that's gonna do um, load load map level. Actually, that's called level here. Um, or open level, it's gonna be one of those things. And the level will be the level we are creating now, which is actually on title, see what we haven't saved it yet. Press Control S, we're gonna save it and call this game. Okay, and then here we can just type in game as well. And that should be everything actually. We can probably also reset the do ones, just in case, but it should be reset when you reload the level. Compile and save that, and now let's go ahead and play the game. Okay, so we can right click to restart. You can see we quickly restart the game, right? And we can play the game again, right click to restart. Keep clicking, it wouldn't do anything, right? Which is good. Otherwise you can keep clicking and make it go faster actually, which doesn't make any sense already. Yeah, that's actually the simplest little thing we can do with Unreal. It's uh, basically from teaching you everything to make a bowling game. It's only 30 minutes of time. It's not not that bad, right? If I were to teach you that with Unity, then I need to teach you coding, right? Uh, which, by the way, I have an example here. This is how we can do it in Unity. It's exactly the same mechanic. As you can see, uh, there's a no arrow thing, no arrow component in Unity, so I have to just use the box, but you can see it does the same thing, right? Okay, right click to restart the game. As you can see, uh, we can make, of course, similar games in both engines. It's not that different underneath the hood. If you take a look at the actual coding, we have two scripts, right? Uh, double click to the player controller, and that's gonna open a an IDE that you specify, which will load an, a different editor here, and you have to type in your code, which will take a little while to load. After loading, you can see now this is the actual code that governs it, right? You need some programming, but C Sharp is some of the easier ones. And basically what it does is basically adding rotation when left mouse click, um, Oh, sorry, when the mouse wheel movement amount is now zero, we can get that from this function. And you can see this is simple English, right? Input, get the access of the mouse scroll well, give me that value. If that value is not equals to zero, not equal is written as exclamation mark and then equal, then we're gonna tell the pointer, in this case, the pointer is actually this box. We're gonna tell it to rotate with this much, right? We're actually adding a few more details here. We're using data time and speed so we can control it. Okay, and also we're getting mouse button down on the left, which is left click, right? And then we need to check if we we have filed, fired already. If we do, then we make it true. And next time we click it, this wouldn't go through, right? So it has to be two things. Left mouse button is clicked and also fired has to not happen yet. Double equal is comparing those two things. We set it to true afterwards, so next time when the, the comparison happens, this will not be true, right? And then the bowling ball will just get a force, right? It's the same as our add in impulse here, right? So it's not that different if you really compare those two. It's just different named node or functions, in this case, in Unity. 
right you can see also get mouse button down one which is the right mouse button the scene manager will load the scene which is game right it's the same as here open level right so underneath the hood you're doing the same logic right if you know the logic you just need to find the, the right uh, verbiage right in this case to to tell the engine what to do okay in this case there's not that much of a different if you know what to do uh, but of course you have to really know the engine to know where to find those commands or those you know f functions okay of course unreal is not limited to blueprint uh, there's another thing you can do which is c++ code okay that part is too complicated for me to show you I don't think you like to see it but I can show you real quick okay uh, I do have another one I can just quickly load that if I can go to the library and uh, bowling games this one should be or CPP version yeah let me double click to open that okay now this new version I'm opening is actually using uh, C++ I can show you how that feels like okay and I'm gonna open the bowling man level. Right, that's the game. You can see it's basically the same mechanic. It's using a cone instead, but it's doing very much the same thing, right? Okay. But if you look at this thing, uh, you can see you can press Control B to find where it it is in the content browser. You can double click to open that. Okay. You can see well in the even graph, there's nothing. Right, it's not the actual game logic is not in here. You can even see the pointer and bowling ball are inherent. They are actually from a C plus plus base class, right? The base uh, type. If you can click on that parent class to look for it, okay. And it's the open the editor, which will take also a little while to open, <laughs> just like in Unity, you have to wait for Visual Studio. Okay, so it's it's loading now. Uh, may take a little while. All right, now I have it open. Okay, uh, this is of course not a, the same IDE. IDE means Integrated uh, Development Editor, right? Um, so this is the code in Unreal. You can see, well, this definitely looks longer, and it has two files for everything here. If you go to the bowling player, you can see similar things. Mouse well movement will call a function called mouse well moved, which is in here. It takes the amount you have moved, you multiply that with how much time has elapsed with the speed and the amount you add local rotation. Now look at that add local rotation, you can see this thing is basically if you go back to that file I showed you earlier, is this thing, add local rotation, exactly the same name. They're actually doing the same thing under the hood. Right, go back here. So this is the C++ code. It's complicated. It's it's, it's pretty tedious. So uh, for normal developers, they wouldn't like to use C++. Right, no one likes to use C++, including me. Um, but sometimes that's the only solution in some engines, like in Unreal, for example. Now, it's uh, C++ is still the the go-to uh, language for developing a game engine or any Thing you need fast code okay so I think they made that choice because they wanted to be just one language to rule them out right they could in implement a C sharp I think that's a design choice um, and then you can see the two very different philosophy in those two engines already right I'm not gonna comment on which one is better I think that's personal choice uh, and based on which one you are more familiar with right most of the times you are only familiar with one of them okay anyway so yeah, this is going to be a quick overview on how game is developed in game engines. Right, I didn't show you how to code, but you can see the code and you can see blueprint. And I think that's enough for a video, right? Like an introduction on how game can be created. Okay, uh, if, you, if you ask me which one to choose, I think it's your choice. Go ahead and play with two engines and see which one you feel better with. Of course, you can take some advice from other you know uh, experienced developers but most of the opinions are biased because most of them are only familiar with one of them and they don't know the other one enough to really make a, a good good comment um, anyway so I, I highly recommend you to, to try both and then you make your own decision 
All right, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.